take a thought that would conventionally or, or would ordinarily lead you towards an object, your, your, your next summer holiday or a relationship or you know, whatever it is, just, just, and follow that thought like a journey you take and allow it to take you to the object. And now take exactly the same thought again, but instead of following it, know yourself as the white page, the screen, the empty space in which the thought is appearing, but not just in which it is appearing, out of which it is made. And you stay put. You don't follow a thought. You don't go where the thought is going. You stay where you are, the empty space. And you see that this thought is a modulation of your ever-present reality. You don't go anywhere. In other words, you don't follow the thought. It is just a modulation of the silent space that you are. You don't go where the thought seems to be going. So in this case, we don't even follow the thought and into the emptiness. It's not even that. We don't even, in other words, we're not following it towards the flower, towards the object. We're not even following it towards the flame into which it dies at the end of the thought. We're not even following it. It's a third possibility where we, we, we allow the thought... It's not even true to say the thought flows through us because that would suggest that the thought is something other than ourself and that it flows through us like a bird flows through the sky. No. Know that the thought, for every, every moment of the thought, is itself already a modulation of, of, of you. You, the one that is empty, that is inherently prior to the thought and thoughtless. In other words, it is a modulation of pure awareness. Allow yourself this pure awareness to take the shape of the thought, but don't lose yourself to it. Don't forget or overlook that you are this emptiness, thoughtless emptiness. Don't become an object called a thought or a self. So it's possible to be an intellectual and not be caught in one's thoughts. To be a true intellectual means not to be caught in your thoughts. Yes. To be a pseudo-intellectual means to be caught in your thoughts, to be infatuated with your thoughts. Yes. The, the word intellectual means to read between the lines. The real intellectual reads between the lines, not the lines. It is to see, to see the space between the words rather than to be infatuated with the words. That's what we do here. We see the white paper, not the words. Or rather, we see the words, but we see the words as a modulation of the space between them. So it's not just the space between the words. It's not the space behind the words. But that space, although we may find it first between the words and behind the words, but that's only halfway. Here we go further. We see that the words themselves are made out of the space that we previously found between them or behind them. That is to be a true intellectual. But is it a shifting? Like, or, or is it a constant observing of, of, of the thoughts? Or is it like, okay, go into the thought, go quickly out? Okay, it's, it's like, to begin with, it seems to be a shifting. Like, first of all, we're watching a movie. We just see the, the images. Then we notice the screen. Ah, oh, it's not a landscape, it's a screen. We see the screen. Then the movie becomes very intense and thrilling. We seem to lose sight of the, the screen. 
we only see the drama in the movie. Then there's a lull in the drama, we notice the screen. Then someone's murdered in the movie, it gets fascinating again, we seem to forget the screen, we go back to the movie. So to begin with, there is a back and forth. But after a while, in most cases, this back and forth, we start going quicker and quicker, backwards and forwards. We don't, we don't get infatuated by the movie for such a long period of time. We maybe get infatuated for a few minutes, but then we think, oh no, of course, it's just a screen. So th this back and forth gets quicker and quicker until the end, the back and forthness of the experience seems to dissolve. You just, you get tired of going from one thing to another and back and forth. You realize, no, I don't need to go back and forth. I can watch the movie, I can enjoy the movie, I can experience the movie and see the screen at the same time. It's one experience, not two experiences. It used to be seeing the movie and then seeing the screen. Now it's the same thing. There's no conflict. There's no conflict between the screen and the movie anymore. It's not, it's not my thoughts or awareness. It's not being lost in thoughts and feelings or knowing myself as the presence of awareness. It's just knowing yourself as the presence of awareness and being totally without resistance to whatever dance awareness is doing at any particular moment. Dancing in this particular thought, in this particular feeling, in this particular perception. In other words, thoughts, feelings and perceptions no longer have the power to veil awareness from itself. So we stop negotiating thoughts and feelings, that they're not a problem anymore. Even the most difficult feelings are no longer a hindrance or a veiling of what we are. We just abide as we are and allow what we are to take the shape of the full, colorful spectrum of experience. The wonderful parts and the awful parts and everything in between. So yes, there's less and less back and forth as time goes on. We, we go more comfortably out into the world of experience again. We don't have to separate ourselves out and into the background witness of awareness and keep the dangerous feelings and thoughts and perceptions at bay. No, nothing is dangerous anymore. Feelings are no longer dangerous. Relationships are no longer dangerous. It's a, a kind of, a sort of ease with experience develops. Where we can experience it totally fully, without resistance, totally open in relationships and situations. And, but, but we don't lose ourselves to an object anymore. Does that answer your question? Or? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Is there any part of your question that's left over? Well, maybe there seems to be this difference between uh, feelings and thoughts, for instance, for me. Like, it's much easier to be lost in thought than to when I observe my feelings. That's um, that's easy. I mean, I can stay not identified with any any part of that for quite long. But when when I follow a thought, when I think a thought, then I seem to be um, one with that in a way. Yeah. Very easily. Yes. So so just to begin with, you do the back and forth with your thoughts, noticing from time to time. Oh. I I'm the space th through which this thought is flowing. Then you get lost in the thought again. But then uh, as this back and forth goes on, see that actually du during the thought itself, you never really go, you never really go to the place that your thought is going to. Thought is always going somewhere, almost always either into a past or a future. 
but you never actually take the journey with your thoughts. They journey in you, but you don't journey in them. You don't need to stop the thoughts going into the past and the future. That's the nature of thoughts. They do that. It's fine. Let them do that. But you don't go with them. You don't share their destiny. <laughs>